Welcome in guys. You know what time it is? It's 2.30 Thursday afternoon, local time, Doha, Qatar. And that means only one thing is possible. It is time to start club swing. Oh, this shirt collar is looking broke as fuck. Man, this is what happens. This is an Etsy shirt. I love this shirt, okay? This is my, my beer shirt collection. My bear shirt, bear beer shirt. Um, but when you order a shirt off of Etsy, you get this broke ass collar. Not not highly quality made, high quality made. Um, got a little club music going on here. Apparently Despacito is the first one. So, you know, I think, I don't know many guys who can turn on that Latin feel uh, to the girls in this video is what I mean, of course. But um, yeah, so we got the club swing going on here, guys. It is the weekend. It is a break here in Doha. One week off now. Hoping for a Sunday night of football with Mark, Daryl, and JD. Looking for you guys to make that happen down in down in Walktown. Um, if we can make that happen, I guess we care or Barwa. Bar I mean, Mark, I know Mark and I are talking about doing uh, football on his balcony. So if we can make that happen, I'd, I'd love to see you guys. Um, it is time for Club Swing though. So let's do a little best ball recap here. Got a little funky hair going on there, eh, whatever. Um, so not much has changed on the, the best ball front. I gotta crank that up a little bit more. We got Phil, first place still, with 980 points. He's riding high with Kamara and Thielen, been scoring big for him. Um, Adam coming in second place still, but just slightly, 898.76 points. And then you got Lucas with 898.08 points. Man, this little thing right here, it doesn't know, it doesn't know which way to go. I don't know which way to make it go, man. Let's just snip that off, apparently. Let's see if we can fold that in there. What do you guys think? It's not happening. Fucking duck feather hair that I got. Whatever. Um, I know Mark would say it's a million dollars worth of hair, and he's probably right, I suppose, but you know. Um, all right. So Luke is coming in third, but only uh, 68 hundredths of a point behind Adam. Uh, yeah. So then we got a uh, Sean coming in at 895.29 points. I think he, that's a jump for Sean. I can't remember if Daryl was fourth or not. Maybe not. Maybe that's exactly where he's been. Or maybe Lucas jumped him. I don't know. I am not paying attention to baseball because I am terrible at it, apparently. Uh, Daryl, 880. Then Mark at 860. Bert at 847 and change. Steve at 833. Me at 813, and JD, the only one yet to crack the uh, 800s at 763 points. All right, so we have one player in the 900s. That's Phil, who has almost a 100-point lead already at this point in the year. So Phil's lead may be insurmountable. We shall see how the rest of the year plays out. But he certainly seems to have dealt with the fewest injuries out of this whole thing, which has definitely torn down some of our, uh, some of our teams. So, all right. That's the best ball recap. I was thinking like maybe, and this is not just because I'm in second to last place. I, I've heard the I've heard the chatter that in a normal best ball league, sure, we do the draft and that's it. This is not a normal year. This is not a normal season. And uh, I am wondering if perhaps we do a one week free agent waiver. Um, one week, $100, spend it. Um, get what you want to get out of it and try to make your team better. So, uh, yeah, that's if let me know what you think about that. <clears throat> uh, Phil would probably say no, JD and I would probably say yes. I know Adam's a yes, uh, even though he's in second, he, he, he's been saying that he wishes we could still have ads, um, during the season, the waivers, uh, and then you just play your best lineup. I don't know, man, it's a different year. So, uh, let me know what you guys think about that. All right. Let's get into the week recap for the Schwing Fest, the Schwing Dynasty. Uh, we are going up with the first game. The upset alert was answered. I called for the upset. I'm sorry, Sean, I called for the upset, and it happened. 
Lucas, who's now 2-3, and three, and that's Ikea of McCaffrey against the Portland Ducks. Sean, who did fix the Ducks, uh, did fix the apostrophe, like I was saying. Um, so he's now just the Portland Ducks, not the Portland Ducks's. Uh, Lucas over Sean on the backs of our man, my man, uh, Sean's man, uh, Steve, sure, uh, he, you know, Steve's a, a Duck fan, Adam, uh, Phil, all of us Duck fans, watching Justin Herbert score 36 and change and gets the upset for Lucas over Sean. Uh, it also did not help that Sean was playing the 49ers defense. Man, 1.3 point, 1.32 points negative. So on the Niners defense, what did they give up? 47 points to the Dolphins? Come on. I mean, we have like what six starters injured or something like that. It's ridiculous how many how many players there they're out. Um, Lucas gets the win, 153 to 132. Big win for Lucas, and it's going to set up a very much a must win game for Sean uh, this week. Um, next game I'm going to look at is me versus. Bill, neighbor, oh boy, oh boy, uh, 158 to 161, here's the, here's the thing, I play in four leagues, I am doing very well, I'm in, um, I'm undefeated in my Megalobowl league, but I lost two games this week, and it was the two leagues that I've done the best in so far, other than that Megalobowl, uh, our league and my ESPN league. I lost by a combined eight points in those two leagues. So the two losses together, three points lost to Phil in this that this league, a five point loss to Lucas in the ESPN league, and in both leagues I had Dak and uh, Keenan Allen go out early. Uh, in the ESPN league, Lucas also can blame the fact that he uh, didn't have a kicker because he doesn't know how waivers work. Um, he tried to drop a player who he had left on his bench on Thursday night, uh, Ryan Suckup. He tried to drop him to add a kicker for the weekend, but he had already played and he did not have a kicker. And so, uh, yeah, I lost my five. Could have been more if Lucas knew how waivers worked and had a kicker, but it also could have been a victory for me if uh, Dak and Keenan Allen hadn't gone out when they did. So, that being said, Phil getting, if I had said Phil only got 23 points from Kamara, I'd be like, yeah, I got this, I got this win. But, um, I didn't score enough points. <laughs> Obviously, Phil scored just enough points, and he got the 161 to 158 victory. Congratulations, Phil. He's at two and three now. Also, I would say the must win this week, and I am four and one uh, now on the season. So, uh, next game, Burt versus Daryl. Um, big game, should be a big game. Uh, Daryl's got some players out. Or, sorry, should have been a big game, but there was a... Uh, there was uh it wasn't it wasn't this was actually this game went 200 to 156 which officially makes this which i said was like should have been the game of the week no instead this ended up being the large marge game of the week be sure and tell them large marge sent you <laughs> so this was the large marge, large margin of victory, and it goes to Bert. And I'll tell you guys, I cannot hear on any football broadcast now. I cannot hear the words "large margin" without without that ah, <laughs> coming in. Uh, it is the large marge is now firmly implanted in my head when I hear large margins of victory or large margins of games. So um, this ended up being the large marge game, though. Bert got two hundred. And Daryl got 156. Burt breaks the 200 mark again this time, just barely broke it. And Daryl did not hit his projection. Now, how this happened? Burt got 96 points from Mike Davis, Dalvin Cook, who went out of the game but still scored 24, and Miles Sanders and Antonio Gibson, even though Gibson only got 13 points. So Burt's four running backs in his lineup got 96 points. Um, including one player at 13 points, and that's because Mike Davis, another big game at 33 points. What is going to happen when Christian McCaffrey comes back? As an owner, of, as a manager, don't like to use that word, as a manager of Christian McCaffrey in my ESPN league and a current manager of Mike Davis, I feel like it's going to be very frustrating when those guys come back. But uh, at least we know that Burt will not be getting the full Mike Davis buffet here. Uh, Daryl got zero points from John Brown. And only 1.4 points from Logan Thomas. So that is a recipe for a large merge, fellas. All right. 
Uh, next game we're going with, and sorry, that's the Hanoi Janes versus the uh, versus Tits. The Janes and the Tits there. Um, next up, we got the uh, the Polar Broncos. I know it's Paler Broncos, but I like Polar Broncos. They're uh, snow beasts of the north, um, and they come with ill intentions to take down your fantasy team. So the Polar Broncos go 171 against Cali Style 139. JD's low scoring continues. Um, not, I'm worried, JD, I'm worried for you, man, because I don't see a lot to turn around in the immediate, and then a lack of draft picks. Uh, is not going to be doing a, a whole bunch of favors for you either coming up. But start getting on that trade and we're making some desperation moves potentially. I don't know what – we'll see what you can come up with. But, yeah, we, this could be a long rebuild if we can't make some uh, big moves soon. Um, oh, Enrique Iglesias. Okay, so that's a uh, – oh, and the – uh, Steve going 29 points from the Baltimore defense was a big turning in this game. Big, big part of this. Uh, Baltimore's defense, Pittsburgh's defense. Man, there's some good defenses right there. All right, next game we got the Oregon Beer Force against Smoke and Mirrors. So beer versus blow is what I call this matchup. Mark v. Adam. Uh... I, you know, the 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 line, they were both three and one teams. That's why this got the game of the week. Um, but we, I felt like this was not going to be as close of a game. However, Mark left the door open because of Tyler Lockett getting eight point four points, Zach Ertz getting one point six points, and he kept in Mike Thomas who got a big zero because he didn't play because he punched some dude in the face. Um, However, that door was slammed shut by the Eagles defense for Adam getting 0 0.04 points. I don't I will I want to see what makes that statistically possible to get four hundredths of a point. Um, and then Aikens got zero, Fitzgerald got a seven, and Brandon Ayuk got a seven. So the door was swiftly shut uh, by Adam's own players on his, on his own face. Alright, now week MVP, there's only one choice for this, and that is Justin motherfucking Herbert. Justin motherfucking Herbert giving uh, Ikea of motherfucking McCaffrey a win over the Portland motherfucking Ducks. That's what we got today, guys. It is Justin Herbert as the MVP. The dumb sit proudly goes to myself. I could have gone two directions with this. Ryan Tannehill went off, but I'm gonna. that was not dumb to start Dallas with Dak Prescott. I won't admit that. So I'm going to go with Miles Gaskin over Devin Singletary. He was my backup plan. There were several times I thought about just making the switch. Uh, and it turns out I should have 24 points. Would have clearly given me the win. Um, and uh, yeah, it would have been it would have been nice to have him in the lineup with those 24 points he earned against my 49ers. All right, we're currently still looking at Bert as the league leader in points, 973, followed by me at 903, and then Daryl at well, not at eight. And that's what I have written down. Daryl at eight. No, he Daryl's like 890 or 880, something like that. I know that. Um, Lowest score continues to be JD at 698, Adam at 712, and Phil at 760. Daryl continues to get abused by opposing teams, uh, giving up 930 points, while Adam and Mark continue to play good defense at 726 and 759 respectively, which means Adam has been scored on 204 times less than Daryl has. 204 points less, so that's kind of insane. Woo! All right, uh, let's get to this week. Um, I'm trying to keep these videos under 20 minutes for y'all. Try to keep it a little shorter. So let's jump into this week. We've got, a, again, what looks like it could be a good game based on the past and based on this year. Hanoi Janes against OBF, the Oregon Beer Force, Mr. Mark, Mr. Burt, not respectively. Switch that around. Uh, the projections right now favor Burt 182 to 157. We are now into the week of big buys, uh, starting to get more teams on buy. And this week it is the Seattle Seahawks, which should help Burt, but could that actually help Mark? Could a little diversity in his lineup, team diversity, help him? Probably not. His best players are Seahawks, uh, and they're out, which is not a good thing. But, you know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that Burt has this like that. Is Mike Davis still the starter? Is Christian McCaffrey back? Burt wins if Christian McCaffrey is not back. Okay. Sorry, Burt wins big if Christian McCaffrey is not back. He he maintains this line. This about 
almost 30 point line 25 point line um if he is back then uh it's more of a game it's gonna be more of a game if christian mccaffrey's back and he doesn't get the mike davis bump uh is cook playing is dalvin cook playing because right now bird has him in the lineup and he's only projected at five points so whoever bird puts in there in that dalvin cook spot you know that's going to be more than a five point projection which makes the spread even bigger i'm picking bird picking bird to beat mark in this game picking bird to improve to four and two and mark to drop to four and two and bird would officially be in either first place um or if i win and he wins i would still be ahead of him at five and one um but if 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 I lose and we're both 1-2, Burt will be in first place due to point differential. Um, or points for. So, um, yeah. All right, we've got uh, me next. Uh, it's time to talk about me now that I've talked about Burt and Mark. Let's talk about the Fantasy Eraser versus Cali Style, me, BJD. This is a palindrome uh, record, 4-1 and one to 1-4. One and four. Um, So, yes, I'm currently 4-1, coming off the, the big loss to Phil uh i've got the raiders out which hurts me with jacobs and darren waller um he's got Thielen versus atlanta that hurts me but melvin gordon's dy will he play will he be in will he be out um jd's the projection right now is 166 to 136 but his his score doesn't include a tight end um so this game is going to be closer than that uh I got myself winning, and I don't feel good about it, except for the fact that JD's team have yet to hit their projections anyways. And no Melvin Gordon, who I is probably his, JD's best player right now. I mean, I know Lamar Jackson's on that team, but I think I think Melvin Gordon has been, you know, based on positional value, uh, really hit one of his best players. So um, picking me to win, uh, JD, drink bet, chug a beer, if we watch the games on Sunday night, we could, uh, you know, we could, we could do a little trash talk during the games, I guess. Um, all right, so I got myself winning. Next up, Ikea McCaffrey versus the Polar Broncos. Those vicious sons of bitches from the north again. Uh, this is a matchup of two and three Ikea McCaffrey and three and two uh, Polar Broncos. And uh, the projections favor Steve right now, 182 to 162. Uh, will Christian McCaffrey play? If so, this becomes a much closer game. Uh, Lucas has been suffering without Christian McCaffrey in. If it's not, if he's not in, I, I think this is going to be a blowout bigger than the spread currently shows. Uh, Steve's going to go over 190 in this game is my prediction. He's going to get back to some high scoring ways and he gets the win. But if Christian McCaffrey plays, Lucas currently projected at 162, he could easily start threatening at 180 points uh, with Christian McCaffrey playing. Although, first game off an injury, probably not not full go. So, I've got Steve winning this game. I don't think it'll be that close. I don't think Christian McCaffrey is ready yet, but you never know. Oh, I got one more game on the sheet. Oh, yeah. This is the strip club matchup. We got tits versus smoke and mirrors. It's uh, two and three tits versus three and two smoke and mirrors, which is bullshit. Tits are undefeated. Tits will be undefeated. Tits are always undefeated. Smoke and Mirrors is exactly that. Um, this is a 172 spread to 155, spreading them tits uh, without a kicker in the lineup. So Tits will get the kicker in there, and that spread will be even bigger. Mahomes, Hill, Aaron Jones, uh, and Robert Woods. Too much, too much to handle. Too many tits to go around, and uh, Tits gets the win, and they both go to 3-3. Three and three. Daryl looking to get into this uh, race at the top based on the scores that he's put up this year, and it hasn't quite played out because of the scores other people put up against him. All right, now on to the most absurd fucking game of the week that I can think of. Um, this is Just Duck It versus the Portland Ducks. So that may have swayed me a little bit. This is a must-win game. That's why this is the game of the week. I also think the score will be much closer than the current projection. Just Duck It, Mr. Phil. At two and three, Portland Ducks, one of the most disappointing uh, records in the league so far at one and four. Uh, right now, the, the spread is 177 for Sean, the Portland Ducks, to 125 for Phil's Just Duck It. Uh, but Phil's 125 does not include a running back. Uh, there's a zero in the running back right now because uh, he hasn't replaced Kamara. And that kicker with Will Lutz being out. The Sluts man is out for this game too with the, the Saints bye. Um, Phil also has to deal with 
uh, Kareem Hunt versus the Pittsburgh Steelers, a damn good defense. Uh, but he does get Justin Jefferson against Atlanta. Could be a plush lineup or plush matchup. And then uh, Sean has Carson Wentz up against Baltimore. And that is, to me, Jalen Hurts season because I feel like Wentz might not leave the might not make it through the game. Baltimore, who I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that game goes. But uh, Wentz could be on his ass a lot in that game. Uh, he does have Scary Terry against the New York Giants, so that is a um, that's a matchup you like. But they need to throw the ball to him, and they need to throw the ball to fucking Antonio Gibson. I'm sick of this bullshit. Jenny McKissick sucks. He is not as good as Antonio Gibson. He's fast, and that's it. And Antonio Gibson is also fast. Give the fucking guy the ball. Let him play. Stop Stop giving this J.D. McKissick and Peyton Bar Barber bullshit and give your best players the ball. That's, that's Terry McLaurin and Antonio Gibson. It's already true, and it needs to happen. So I'm hoping that happens this, this week uh, because I have both of them on my team in another league. So I would love to see Scary Terry go off this, this game. Um... I'm saying a lot of negative things about this game for Sean's side and a lot of some positives for Phil's side, but I'm not picking. Sorry, you know, Sean last week I picked Lucas for the upset. I'm not doing it again. You're going to win this game. Uh, this is a must win. It's a must win more for Phil because at 3-3, three three, Phil is uh, in striking distance. At 2-4, and four, if they're both 2-4, and four, they both start looking ahead to next season. Sean, this is an absolute must win. At one and five, I won't say the season's over, but I'll start drinking to your health um, and well-being because at one and five, that's going to be hard to climb out of in what has become a competitive league, okay? What has become a very middle-heavy... It was last year, too, middle-heavy league. So, um, all right. So I'm picking Sean in that one. And that's it, you guys. That's the end of it. Again, let me know what you think about that best ball uh, possible one week. Open up free agency. Have a spending spree. $100. One week to spend it. Get what you get. Um, let me know what you guys think about that. I would probably do it after week after this week. So we have week six. Between week six and week seven. Uh, but the best ball goes all the way to the end of the year. So uh, we'd probably actually do it after week eight. So we do a couple more weeks. Um... Or maybe right before week eight. Let's not make this go too long. Or the game, it might be out of reach. Actually, that's another thing. When should we do it? You guys tell me what, what you think should happen. And I will choose whether or not I want to listen to you. Um, oh, this is oh, this is Shakira. Shakira, waka waka. Uh, yeah. So, let me know, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Um, love bringing this stuff to you guys. Damn, Shakira. Damn. It's just ridiculous, man. Just ridiculous. Just no, it doesn't stop. All right, you guys. Love you. Happy Thursday. For those of us in Doha, happy break week. Enjoy having your wives at home. Um, yeah, none of you work here in this league anymore. So, uh, yeah. All right, guys. Peace out. Have a good weekend.